Paths are rough, and sometimes the hills seem impossible, don't they? Well, the Hebrew people felt just that way. And then, suddenly, the invisible hands of time struck God's appointed hour on the clock of human history. The hour of freedom had come, and the Lord was ready to perform what he had promised. This same God, who had been silent for 400 years, was now about to speak and the whole of eternity would hear what he had to say. And the Lord said, Moses, tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment I will bring out my people. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Oh yes, before long there would be no mistake. They would know he was the Lord, for they were about to get a first-hand look, close up and in living color, at the power and fury of Jehovah. And so the plagues came, one by one. Oh, Pharaoh, you foolish, foolish man. Moses went to the Nile and turned the river into blood. The water was red, the fish were dead, and they washed up. Is it really worth the cost? This time he threw some ashes Way up high in the air Till falling like rain Came boils and pain On Egyptians everywhere And God's children said Dark 
What an incredible year that must have been. The Hebrew people watched in awe the mighty works of God, and they were convinced more than ever of his faithfulness to deliver them. No longer would Egypt mean bondage and slavery, for now it was the promise of great victory and the birth of a brand new nation. That hour, a song was born in the hearts of God's people, a song that would echo down through the ages. Oh, the tunes may have changed and the words may have been altered, but the song is still the same. For he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Finally, God said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Egypt. Tell all of Israel that every man is to take a lamb on the 14th day of this month and shall kill it at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and over the doorpost of their houses. And on that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn. But when I see the blood, I will pass over you. After that, Pharaoh will let my people go. Moses has told us your final plan, Lord. And the joy and excitement shows on the faces of all your people. All except one, Father. For there is no joy in this for Nathan. Oh God, his heart is broken. The lamb, our only lamb, is his dearest friend. And you have said it must die. It seems so unfair, Lord. That precious lamb is so innocent and harmless. 
If Nathan had the choice, I'm sure he would die in the Lamb's place. And yet, you are God, and your ways are higher than our ways. Help my son to understand it is for him. The Lamb must die. Please be with Nathan, for this sacrifice is going to be so hard for him. If only his father were here to lift this burden from his young shoulders. How my heart ached to hear him plead with you, begging for some other way, and then finally to hear him surrender and say, Not what I want, but your will be done. Oh, Father, may these last few moments for them in the garden be special ones. And may Nathan rest in your promise that because the Lamb dies, he shall live. There was another lamb. He was perfect and he was sinless. He was Jesus, the Son of God. One day, this lamb, in his love and great compassion, allowed himself to be nailed to a cross. There he suffered and bled for the sins of the whole world. And when he had died, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. But on the first day of the week, as it began to dawn, they came to the tomb and found it empty. And the angel said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. For he is risen. Go quickly and tell his disciples. It's It's daybreak, the whole world 
shadows flee and night fades away, the world gives birth to a brand new day. As the sunlight breaks in the morning sky, praise fills the earth death has been defied. The sun is living. And the Lamb is alive. What a perfect end to our story. And yet, for the believer, it is not the end, but only the beginning, the beginning of eternal life. For Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die. Jesus the portrait of a lamb. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Centered in the majestic gallery of time is the portrait of a lamb. It is a masterpiece of innocence, a stroke of perfection from the brush of God. The lamb's tender beauty and gentle spirit stand in vivid contrast to the solemn role he has played in the drama of human history. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory 
and blessings.